Welcome back, Nerd Squad. I'm Patty D. Spider-Man is loved for being relatable. He hasn't got it all figured out like Superman or Batman. He's got a job, he worries about his family, and he suffers a lot. Well, maybe more than a lot. Here's part three of the top 10 worst things that have happened to Spider-Man. Number 10, stopped a train with his body. In the second Spider-Man film starring Tobey Maguire, Spidey goes through some burnout after losing MJ to John Jameson and having his friendship with Harry Osborn fall apart. During this time, he's lost his spider powers and he gets attacked by Doc Ock. After an intense battle, the mad Doc leaves Spidey to rescue a rogue train heading off of the rails. Pete, having already taken off his mask, puts himself directly in the line of danger and is stretched to the point of nearly breaking in two as he gives everything he's got to stop the train. The effort leaves him battered, bruised, and barely conscious. And in a touching moment, the citizens of New York move him to safety and return his mask, swearing that they won't tell a soul. It's a touching tribute to Spider-Man's sacrifice and it definitely looks pretty painful. Hey Nerd Squad, if you like these videos and you wanna see more, take a second to hit that like button and ring that notification bell. We really appreciate it. Number 9, got dragged off to fight in another dimension. This version of Peter Parker has it pretty rough. When he was a boy, his parents died in a car crash and his Uncle Ben was highly abusive. In his anger, he adopts the name Charlie Parker instead of Peter. He's a problem child and he spends two years in a juvenile detention center. By age 13, he's living on his own and using his abilities to steal from drug dealers. If that's not bad enough, He's later recruited into the Superior Spider Army, picked up by Ashley Barton, and dragged off to fight in an alternate universe where the Earth is irradiated, without so much as an introduction or an explanation. They're just like, let's go, no time to explain. This version of Spidey is pretty grumpy, and it's easy to see why. Regular Pete already has a hard time, but this guy got dealt a seriously crappy hand. Still, having spider powers does seem pretty awesome. Number 8 got beaten to near death by the Phoenix Four. The Avengers vs. X-Men event was epic and mind-blowing, featuring some crazy showdowns between our favorite heroes. In A vs. X Volume 1 Part 7, Spider-Man plays a big role as he trains with Hope Summers, trying to help her learn how to control the Phoenix Force. As she grows frustrated that the fight is escalating and she hasn't been able to help, Spidey tries to reassure her that her time will come. Ironically, it's Spider-Man's time that comes later, as he covers the escape of his fellow Avengers by distracting those who are controlled by the Phoenix Force. Despite him having no chance, Spidey gets up again and again after he's beaten to a pulp, likely suffering multiple broken bones while rescuing his friends. It's a real display of heroic sacrifice from everyone's favorite wall crawler. Number 7 became a heartless killer and died. Introduced in What If Spider-Man vs Wolverine in 2008, Assassin Spider-Man is a serious dude. This version of Spidey becomes an assassin that works alongside Wolverine, which sounds super awesome and not like one of the worst things to ever happen to him. However, he eventually becomes kind of jaded, with no qualms about killing and just doing whatever it takes to get the job done. Worse still, this version of Pete doesn't even make any quips or crack jokes like the Spidey we know and love. He literally has a gun in his web shooters. He is eventually recruited into the Spider Army, but later he tragically dies. Still not the worst thing to happen to Spider-Man. Number 6 turned into a lizard beast and then died. In this universe, it was Gwen Stacy who was bitten and received spider powers, and the experience had a profound impact on Peter Parker. Pete idolized Spider-Woman and was desperate to be like her. So desperate in fact that he experimented on himself in a scene that goes horribly wrong and he's transformed into a terrible lizard-like creature. He shows up in this form at the Midtown Senior Prom where he does battle against Gwen. After a serious beatdown, Peter returns to his human form, but he still dies from his injuries. Being dead has probably got to be one of the worst things that's happened to Peter, but it's not as bad as all the suffering that some other versions of Spider-Man go through. Number 5, Became a Werewolf. This version of Spidey appears in Marvel Zombies Army of Darkness Volume 1. He doesn't really have a large role or anything, but being transformed into a werewolf has got to be a new low for Spidey. In the comic, we see him with big old wolf ears and, a, and big hairy arms ripping out of his costume, and it is not lit. Can you imagine werewolf Spider-Man swinging through the moonlit sky chasing you down to eat you? 
Yikes. The werewolf web-slinger and his fellow superhero werewolves ravage the world and eat Galactus, later chasing after Ashley Williams when he appears in this universe. Number 4. Killed by Thanos Is there anything worse than ceasing to exist? When Thanos performed his legendary snap with the Infinity Gauntlet, literally half the universe was wiped away, but I was too busy worrying about Spidey to even comprehend the destruction. Seeing Spider-Man disappear like dust on the big screen was seriously heart-wrenching for a lot of people, but it also spawned a generation of hilarious memes, perfectly balanced as all things should be. Luckily for us, these events are undone eventually, but man, there's nothing like seeing Spider-Man die to sober you up. Number 3. Became one of the Four Horsemen of Apocalypse This has actually happened to Spider-Man on two different occasions. Once in Cable and Deadpool number 15 in 2005, and then again in Avengers Volume 4. In these two stories, Apocalypse unleashes his master plan for world domination, which includes recruiting four people he finds fit to be his horsemen of the apocalypse. The 2010 version is especially horrifying, with Spidey being horribly mutated into this hairy white beast seemingly fused to a horse-like creature that looks like it's made of webbing. Being used by evil bad guys is bad enough, but being turned into a hideous monster for that is definitely not Spider-Man's finest hour. Number 2. Been the last person alive on Earth This version of Spider-Man is actually Ben Parker, in an alternate reality where he received spider powers when he accompanied his nephew Peter to a science demonstration and was bitten by a radioactive spider. Ben decided to use his powers to help others, but retired after his nemesis, the Emerald Elf, discovered his identity and killed his wife and Peter. Later on in life, Ben is approached by Ezekiel Sims who warns him of the imminent arrival of Morlun, devourer of totems, on a mission to destroy all spider folk. Ezekiel allows Ben to hide in his bunker under Sim's tower, and while he's there, the whole city of New York and presumably the world is subjected to nuclear destruction. He only emerges from the bunker later when the other spider totems arrive in the universe to enlist his help. He is reminded by the OG Spider-Man of his own advice about great responsibility and he suits up one last time to help the Spider Army. It must have been really lonely just sitting around in that bunker though. Damn. And here we are at number one. Turned into a zombie and ate Mary Jane and Aunt May. This one is just seriously messed up. So in this story, a zombie virus is infecting heroes like Luke Cage and Hawkeye and eventually Spider-Man as well. After being bitten by Colonel America, Spidey takes a punch that dislocates his jaw and then in this fight realizes the level of destruction happening all across the city. He realizes in the moment he's going to have to go save Mary Jane and Aunt May so he just bails, swings off to go and save them ASAP. Unfortunately, he does show up a little too late and the zombie virus is already working its way through his body. When MJ approaches, he lashes out and bites her, and as she turns into a zombie, Pete sets to work on Aunt May. Ultimately, we are treated to this horrifying scene in which Spidey holds up Aunt May's severed head and screams at it. Yeesh. Alright guys, before I go, let's take a look at some comments from my last video. Top 10 newest Marvel Comics heroes, part 2. Chris Bradley says, Wave, Arrow, White Fox, and Crescent are amazing, and I really love Luna Snow. Yo, I also really love Luna Snow and White Fox. I think you can really tell in the video I'm like super excited to be talking about White Fox. Kenny in Zane says, I love how Patrick gives credit to Marvel Future Fight and Marvel Contest of Champions for creating some of these new characters. Yeah, man. You know, I gotta give credit where credit is due. I also just really love fun facts like that. Did you guys know there used to be a mobile game called Ultimate Spider-Man? It had every single version of Spider-Man in it. Super fun, endless runner, but they ended up shutting down the servers. I really hope the game comes back in some capacity. Drew says, great video. Just recently got back into comics, so these vids help. Am pretty pissed to hear the MVP died though. He seemed pretty interesting to me. Thanks man, we are happy to help. Working on these videos sometimes sends me deep down the rabbit hole, and it's always cool discovering some new characters. Check out the Captain America Corps if you like MVP. It's a whole host of uh, Captain America type heroes. Really cool. Thanks for watching, y'all. I'm Patty D, and this is Top 10 Nerd.